This is a really interesting question. I believe that every single Angular developer should know answer on this question. So what's the question? Explain the architecture of an Angular application. How would you answer this question? To answer this question, we have to take into consideration different versions of Angular. So as a bonus tip, maybe, you could also mention version 1. So from the version 1, Angular was using MVC architecture, so model view controller. And I think this is enough for the version 1. From version 2, Angular is using modular modules or modular architecture here until the version 17. From version 17, we have something different until the current version that is 19.2. Uh, so uh, let's see what's, what's happening in the modular architecture here. Sorry. And now here I have a, on the screen, I have a project that we created uh, a while ago. So uh, I'm using it to demonstrate uh, this uh, answer, answers on the architecture questions here. So uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the first part of this modular architecture is mod modules. So we have a modules here, and this is the core of the application, of Angular application actually, from version 2. And uh, every single application should have at least one module that is actually app module. So we can see here that we have an app module, and we also have another modules here. And you can think about modules as a small parts or small applications within our uh, a bigger application here. So uh, we have like uh, public private modules and we have shared modules and we have maybe core module. So we are importing these modules into our app module. And the thing is that uh, we can also import uh, uh, modules uh, uh, in our other modules. For example, public module can um, import shared module and extend uh, their functionality so we can use the functionality from shared module into our app module so this is something about the modules here uh, another part of the module architecture is actually components so we have like uh, components within our modules here so each component is small small ui uh, part of ui block uh, when building our angular application another part of the uh, modular architecture is services so services, uh, we are actually using like, I have just added a folder for this architecture. I have actually no services created right now, but the services are parts of the application that we're using to communicate between the components or to fetch the data or to uh, manage a state using the services. So this is something that we are using. And this is, I think, enough to mention regarding the services part here. Also, another part of the architecture is routing. In the routing, we have like, uh, I'm not sure if I have here, yes, I have an app routing module, and we have a module and we have routes and we are defining routes here. Using that routes, we are able to lazy load modules We are because of the performance. Uh, we are able to, sh uh, uh, to navigate between the components and uh, we have to use app, uh, app route, uh, router, mo sorry, uh, we have to use a router outlet that is somewhere here. Let me show it. Yeah, router outlet here, and we can show the uh, the route content uh, content of the applications that are, are being routed into that component here. So this is something about the routing, and we have also templates and da data binding here. So I'll bring uh, some a list of uh, these points here, so you can see it and track them. Just to make this bigger. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, and we have uh, templates and data binding also as a part of the modular architecture. So that means that we have interpolation and we have property binding, event binding as this, and we have two way binding like written like this. So this is also part of the modular architecture. And another thing is directives here. We are using directives actually to extend uh, with uh, HTML with the custom behavior here. So we have different uh, kinds of arc, uh, directives here. So we have a by uh, structural directives, as you can see here, and we have a attribute directives, as you can see here. So uh, structural directives are actually uh, uh, ng if here, ng4. They are doing something in the structure, 
structure. So we are checking if something you know, is here to show the specific blocks or looping through some data and showing more and more components inside of that. And also we have attribute these. These are just showing the classes and adding as an attribute in, uh, within uh, our component here. And the next one is pipes. So I close this one. Pipes. Pipes are actually transforming data in Angular. So we can use them uh, for currencies, for uh, rounding numbers, for everything that you want. And we have uh, built-in uh, pipes and we have custom pipes that you can make yourself. So this is part. And also we have dependency injection that is actually injecting our uh, uh, components and services and everything into our module and, uh, and communicating, uh, providing the and providing it in, to our Angular application actually. And uh, we have a state management that is optional part for the architecture. But uh, if you are using a bigger application, creating a bigger application and you need to manage state in a proper way and uh, have like better optimization there, then you're using uh, uh, state management and maybe uh, NGRX there and their, their, their uh, uh, key concepts such as actions, reducers, and uh, selectors, and effects. So uh, this is all uh, going uh, from version 2 until version 17. So uh, what's going on in the version 17? In the version 17, Angular introduces standalone components. So standalone components means that we are no longer using ng modules and they are not uh, there by default and we don't have to use them by default. But from version actually uh, and, uh, at version 17, they were optional, but from uh, uh, latest versions such as uh, 18, 19, uh, we have, we have uh, standalone components as default here. So uh, in standalone components, we have no ng, no ng modules. Uh, and there is no app module by default, and we don't have to use any of these uh, modules that we already seen in the version two plus. So uh, application doesn't have uh, application don't, don't have uh, any modules. So I'll open another project here that is actually in the latest version of Angular. So we can see here that we have no modules actually, and what we have is uh, app config, and we have like. Uh, uh, App component here that is holding uh, everything uh, as, as a default component. And we have our configuration here. You can see here. And there are also some differences here. So uh, routing is a bit different. And we have a standalone routing. And it is a bit easier to, to implement than previously. And we can just import as these routes from our routes and we are just uh, using provider route and routes here. So in the previous version, uh, we had a bit different thing here. We had like upper or ng module here, imports up exports, and we have a router module for root like this here and providing the routes as well there. So um, these are the key differences. Uh, bring it this. So these are the key differences between uh, Angular version 2 plus and uh, Angular 17 until 19. So uh, to answer the question, you could mention everything of these and uh, there's no way that you could be wrong uh, with this answer. So I hope this uh, answer was, uh, and the question actually was interesting to you. And if you like the video, please like, share and comment and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.